this album is the never ending album never that's ending the, that's the title of the album because yeah. hush uh, would not allow us to stop making songs. <laughs> it was an ever-growing thing that just had no end to it until I finally put my foot down and said, yo, we, we gotta to, stop. We gotta stop. <laughs> we gotta stop making songs. We gotta stop giving Maestro all our money. I sent you a beat yesterday. Yeah, that's not making the album. <laughs> but it's done, and it's called 718-2313. 718 being the area code of Queens. New York. New York. 313 being the area code, code of D-E-T, Detroit. 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 Michigan. Michigan. It's a New York to Detroit album. It's uh, it's a pretty good album. I it's, think, I think it's, it's great. Okay. We did all right. I think it we did our thing. about two years to make, but uh, I'm pretty proud of it. I think the process was uh, pretty simple. I'd make a beat, send it to Bobby. Bobby said, it's a go. And then he would normally drop a verse on it uh, at his house uh, and then send it to me and then I would take it into Silent Riot uh, and take it with my dog Maestro uh, who was kind of like the third group member of this whole album uh, he recorded it and mixed it for us and then uh, we'd knock it out yeah this this album was yeah. really like a it was a, a mixture of new school ways of recording and old school because you know we started Probably right at the beginning of the pandemic, March 2020, um, Hush was sending me beats. You know, I have a home studio, so I was sending him a lot of verses through email and sessions, and he'd take it into the studio. But as the album started to get legs and, and more people started to become a part of it, um, I started coming to Detroit. I went to Silent Riot, got to work with Maestro. Hush was coming to New York, you know, and, and we were just going back and forth working on music and just building this album into what it is. And building a friendship. And building a friendship, and it's just, you know, it it, it really snowballed into something special, you know what I'm saying? And I think, uh, you know, in those early days when we were just sending verses back and forth, we didn't really have the intention of making an album. Mm -hmm. It just kind of became something bigger than the both of us. You know, once Daru got involved, once Marv got involved, you know, once we, once we, we took a step back and saw that, you know, this is more of like a compilation of sorts than just, you know, an album of just me and him, um, you know, kind of took on a life of its own. And, and we started taking it really, really seriously because we saw the, the potential that it had. Yeah, we, we kind of just were like the, we were the guides of the album. We just got all these people involved and turned it into what it is. First single we did was Monsters on R2 on Maple Street. Um, that was kind of like during the pandemic, so a lot of the content of that song was based based around what was going on at that time, around 2020. And then we moved into uh, the first like official single called People. Um, Bobby can tell you a little bit more about yeah, that. Yeah, People, um, People came about, we were working, it was one of the first times I came out to Detroit and we were doing a studio session where we were working on another song and we had about an hour left in the session. And I basically asked Hush, you know, like, what do you have? We still have some time. Like, do you have any other beats that you're sitting on? What could we work on? He pulled up this beat. Um, I immediately had something for it. I went into the booth, recorded it. About 30 minutes later, Hush had his verse done. Um, and he, you know, he went in, smashed it. And we were like, you know, this is something special. Like, right on the spot, we knew it was a song that, that was going to have legs. And at the time, I was working with Daru Jones on another project that I did uh, called One Mic and One Drum through Fat Beats. And just ironically, Daru being a Detroit native, it made sense for us to bring him in on this project. So that was one of the records where I called Daru and I was like, listen, man, like you need to get in here. You need to put drums on this song. And he came in one day, smashed it and literally took the song to the next level. So. The second single, basically like the second official single was Sometimes, and Sometimes came about, uh, we were we were pretty much done with the album, and I uh, called on my homie D.L. Jones, a uh, well-known guy in the Detroit scene, worked with Slum Village, recorded like their first album, um, did a lot of great stuff around here. He had some beats for me, uh, and gave me this beat that I, I was just like blown away by. Um, I wrote it in 15 minutes 
and called Bobby up and was like, yo, I want to put this on the album. And I uh, said, I need you to get a hook on this. And Bobby like knocked that out. And uh, yeah, it turned into something incredible. When we shot the video, it was kind of like a homage to Jay Dilla, um, who basically was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, uh, hip hop producers of all time, especially for Detroit. He means everything to us. So paying homage to Jay Dilla, um, was a great way to uh, jump off the second single for sometimes. Me personally, what I like about New York MCs, like New York is like, is the staple, it's the birth of hip hop. Like everything stems from there. So for me as an MC, I go back to the roots of it, to the Big Daddy Canes, to to everybody, for, you know, Coogee Rap, to, I mean, especially Queens, like, there's there's nobody better to me out of Queens than Coogee Rap. So, you know, like that's who I listened to. That's who I listened to growing up. I still listen to New York hip hop. It seems to me like New York is always trying to make you step up your bar of being an MC. And it's always been something that I, I cling to. That's why I like New York hip hop. I don't know if I ever fashioned myself uh, out of New York, but I am definitely a product of Hip hop, and if hip hop started in New York, then guess what? Well, I mean, the 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 thing I love about Detroit hip hop and the Detroit hip hop scene is like you can't really categorize it. You know, there's 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 so many different styles out here. Like you got the hip hop shop crowd, you got you know the Eshams, the ICPs, you got a heavy street scene. You know, like the Doughboy Cash Outs, Trick Trick. It's just it's just like a a, a real you know melting pot of all these styles um but like for me as a kid you know i learned a lot about lyricism from guys like elzai guys like eminem guys like royce the five nine you know i was a huge jay dilla fan rest in peace you know what i'm saying there was just so many people that i idolized and respected out of this city that were you know i know how to rap because I listen to them you know what I'm saying in addition to all the New York stuff in addition to the West Coast stuff but there was something about Detroit and just the Midwest in general like I think it's because the focus was on New York for so long people went extra hard out here to be respected um, and it showed you know what I mean like the caliber of rappers that exist in this city is crazy um, so I'm just honored to be a part of a project that kind of marries you know new york and detroit um and and we got legends from both cities we got up and comers and 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 newer rappers from both cities and it's something that just hasn't really been done before where like bro look who we got on this album i know it's it's you know guilty simpson marv one rob swift quest mccody kwame michael fire little d trick 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 good money g100 good money g100 the truth the truth uh, Lil D. I already said Lil, Lil D. D. Lil D's killing it, by the way. <laughs> he is. Um, so, yeah, bro. It, it, you, it, I, we can't even. We can't even really, like, say everybody because I forget. Like, it's, it's crazy. Who else? Sydney. Sydney. Rose Spit. Rose Spit. Uh, Quest for Cody. You said I Quest. I said Quest. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, like you, you forget about you forget about how many people have contributed to this album. And yeah. then again, last but not least, Maestro. You know who's <laughs> who's. You know, like you said, the, the silent third member of the group that just not only engineered the project from top to bottom, but also added production work, you know, added some instrumentation. Like, that guy's a virtuoso. He can mix it incredibly. Oh, so, it's amazing. 718 2313, man, it's never been done. Never, ever in the history of Detroit rap have we ever collaborated with an entire state, New York to Detroit and brought the best MCs together. You know, I bring what I brought to the table, Bobby brings what he brings to the table, and it's a hodgepodge of the most amazing talent in the, both of these towns, man. 718-2313.